News First Newsline with Faraz Shaukatali. Jolly good morning to you. This is Newsline. Live as always from the News First studios in uh, Dorset Street in Colombo. And um, we start the week off with some remarkable weather. It's absolutely lovely. Our country is looking as beautiful and appealing as ever. And, uh, of course, there are a few small things that need tweaking. And uh, what needs tweaking the most, apparently, is that uh, the religion that we all follow. Uh, that's right. Everybody in this country has one religion. I don't know if visitors understand this, but that religion is cricket. And uh, Mr. Cricket himself is with us in the studio. And, of course, uh, he's the man who brought great fame to our country and so much pride when, of course, in 1996, he led the team to victory and lifted the World Cup. He's right here, Mr. Arjuna Ranatunga, also the Cabinet Minister for Petroleum Resources. Good morning to you, Mr. Ranatunga. Good morning, Hugo. It's, uh, it's uh, almost overwhelming to be in the presence of such iconic figures as you. And um, in the same time, uh, I'm wondering why it is that uh, in the midst of so many other things politically that uh, we wanted we wanted you to talk about cricket um, what, what's so wrong with this game that we all love I think that bad administration <coughs> if, if I have to give you a very small answer it has to be bad administration mm -hmm. I think we don't have plans they talk big, but ultimately nothing is happening. Yeah. And the school cricket standard has gone down very yeah. badly. We don't have policies to pick sides. And uh, they talk about big things rather than the basics. Yeah. And the constitution has to be changed. There are a lot of things we have to do. But generally, what I felt in the last three years from the time this good governor's government came, the cricket has been on the downward. That's the main reason was the ministers who were involved in yeah. sports doesn't know how to read the, the, the sports law. And uh, because of that, all unwanted people once again got into the board. Their colleagues jumped into the board. And it's more like a business rather than uh, a sports anymore. That is so it's become, a, it's become an opportunity to make money, is it? Absolutely. I think it's all about looking after your colleagues who gives you the vote. Mm -hmm. I think that's the reason a lot of past players like Vettamonis, um, Madhugalas, uh, um, even I have been speaking about this, then uh, Mahila, Sangakaras, Murlidharan, mm -hmm. they all say we, it's high time that we change the constitution. But we don't have a single minister, sports minister, who has guts to change the cricket constitution. They are very scared. I don't scared know whether what? I don't know whether we have a sports minister who is... Uh, looking after cricket, or uh, the cricket is away from the sports means That's the only thing I realized in the last three years, mm -hmm. because they don't want to uh, change the constitution. Whatever the past cricketers say, whatever the past cricketers, they, whatever the uh, the proposal they come with, they don't want to look into that because we have. It's, it's all about ultimately money. Money, money push everything down, and the cricket has gone down because some people earns money. On the other hand. The school cricket standard goes down, club cricket standard goes down, internationally we are playing very poor cricket mm. and and I really don't know how to start again. This will be, we are, we are on the downstream but we still have time if you stop it properly and get right people to run cricket and we had a lot of quality gentlemen who ran cricket but mm. not anymore. Mm. I think if you don't change it, I think we will be worse than even teams like Ireland and uh, maybe Afghanistan. I think we are heading there. Yeah, Start, yeah, we are heading are there. Starting. Yeah, we lost to we lost to um, uh, Thailand in 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 ladies cricket or junior cricket. We are losing to all unknown countries. These are the issues we have to address. But we are trying to address big things, but not the basics. This is where we go wrong. But you, um, you said several things. But one of the things that struck me was that we would not had any ministers who know how to. Uh, to read the, the sports law and to understand the Sri Lanka cricket constitution. But that's a little bit uh, surprising because um, uh, Dasu Jasekra was a, or is a lawyer, he has a legal background, uh, and so does the current Minister of Sport, uh, Mr. Faisal Mustafa, who of course openly says that he doesn't know anything about cricket per se. Now, 
these are lawyers, and one is the president's counsel, Faisal Mustafa is. Well, what do you mean when, when you say that they don't understand it? Have they not taken the time to read it? What is it? I think if you take the sports law, it categorically says the people who involves in betting, directly or indirectly, you can't get involved in sports. Mm -hmm. And pe now in the cricket constitution, there's another clause saying people who supplies uh, sports goods can't get involved in yeah. the media you can't get involved That's in right. sports So these are the things people should go through directly or indirectly when you say that it's a vast area It's very wide very wide and 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 I, I whatever said and then the past sports minister and the previous government never allowed uh, uh, Sumati Pala, because everyone knows what is his business background is, uh, no one allows him to come into the uh, the cricket board. And now it changed overnight. The new ministers come, allow him to contest, and now we are we are facing. It's not only the rule, but bottom line is the cricket, the way cricket suffers. On what basis was the last minister? Uh, did the last minister allow Mr. Sumati Pala to contest? I really don't know. I think the previous minister I was referring to, uh, Alud Gamage, the yeah. former sports minister, I think he could, he's not a lawyer, he's not a presidential counsellor, mm. but he could read the, the law. Right. And I, I, the entire country knows what is the background of uh, Sumati Pala family, what, what, is the, what, what is their business all about. Mm. And if we don't know that, I think something is wrong somewhere. But I, I just want to play devil's advocate for right. a few seconds. Um, you yourself admitted that this law is rather wide. It's wide-angled about this gaming industry mm. involvement. So, can Mr. Sumitipala actually uh, say that, look, what can I do? My mother or my brother is, uh, I'm just picking examples out of, the, out, of the, you know, out of the air, but my mother or my brother is doing the, whatever they do, mm. and I'm not involved. Will that hold water? No, not at all. Like that's why they say indirectly. Indirectly, you are involved, and we all know that whether he is directly involved or not. Yeah. But the bottom line is, when the rules are there, the sports minister had to go through that and try to implement that. That has been the rule for the last so many years. Yeah. And only unfortunate thing is that uh, even when it comes to ICC, yeah. ID, ICC doesn't react on these things. They talk about. A, a player doing something wrong, maybe ball tampering. Yeah. I always say the ICC has been the toothless tigers. They don't target on the right areas, mm. but I'm sure that there's a investigation happening. I'm sure that we will get the results very soon. Mm. And uh, uh, who gets the blame? The country gets the blame. So ultimately, the minister has to take the responsibility on that. If you allow wrong people to come in, who the former minister or the present one? who has given that authority for the wrong people to come in, if something happens at the ICC, or the given by a directive given by the ICC, mm. I, I think those two has to take the blame on that. But, I mean, w w w w once it's done, it's almost too late, isn't it? It has been now. There, there was a defamation court case against me. Yeah. And categorically it says, uh, so, uh, Mr. Sumati Pala was involved in uh, gambling. Yeah. And uh, there are enough proofs we can go on saying these things, but ultimately now that there's a court case happening, I don't want to discuss about that. Mm. But generally, forget about the rules and regulations. Think of the present status of cricket. Mm. I, I think we are heading disaster. We are, we, when we came into power in 2015 with the new uh, good governor's government, yeah. Test cricket, we were ranking number three. Mm. 2020, we were ranking number one. Uh, one day, we were either three or four. Now that we have slipped down to seven, eight positions everywhere, I think we are worse than Afghanistan in 2020. So, can't these sports ministers identify this and say there's something wrong? That is what happened in the past. Like you take ministers like Kiriyal, uh, S.B. Disanayaka, Jeevan Kumaratunga, they dissolve the cricket board appoint interim committees. You mm. go through the entire records in the interim committee. Yeah. Because when the interim committee comes in, yeah. the interim committee doesn't have any responsibility yeah. on the sports clubs. Mm. They have to do the right thing by the minister. So minister appoints the interim committee and they are not answerable for the voters. That is where you do the right thing on cricket. But if you are answerable for these uh, clubs who doesn't have votes, 
people who are looking for benefits, then you are pressurized. You are talking about 140 yeah. numbers. So when you have 140 numbers to be entertained by the head of cricket in Sri Lanka, it's a disaster. But when you have uh, seven people who runs cricket in uh, now, now take India, mm. India Supreme Court ordered a couple of guys to run cricket, and they are they are running it pretty well, much better than the previous corrupt uh, some of the uh, the some of the corrupt uh, officials. Mm. Now those are the decisions taken the, by the Indian uh, Supreme Court, and mm. and and the Indian cricket is on the right track. I think they are they are heading on a very very. Uh, uh, they are planning for the next World Cup. They are looking at not really the n n n uh, 2019. Maybe they are looking at about two, three World Cups. They are building sites under 19 sites versus here, emerging sites are in England. So there are a lot of development. You take our ones. What are we doing with our 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 cricket? You take school cricket has gone down very badly. I can remember when I got into the national side in age two, 81. I was in the squad when the Australians were here, we were, and I were, there were five school cricketers were in the 30-odd member squad. Mm. And in 1982, when I was picked to play for the national side, there were six school cricketers were in the national pool. So those are the talent or the standards we had. But unfortunately, you can't pick a single person, schoolboy cricketer, to get into a national squad anymore. So but, and, and that's the talent, isn't it? Is that is being able to spot. Yeah, that is where you need spot to them young. You need to do a proper foundation. Even if you are building a building, you have to have a proper foundation. That is what we had when we were young. We were so lucky. We played at the we played cricket at the right time and retired at the right time. Money was not involved. We never looked at the money part. We were more concerned about how to achieve victories for the country, how to gain glory for the country. Those, that is the ambition we had. That's why I always say there were su superb cricketers in 1996. Uh, they were much better cricketers than the World Cup winning team. But we picked, I, I will say apart from Arvind, the, I, I couldn't get a replacement for Arvind, but I could have got replacement for the other 12 guys. Mm -hmm. Because they have a they have a better player. Some some they have a play better players, but they were not committed like the guys I picked. Right. I always wanted to pick the the cricketers who will give me blood, throw their blood to win matches for the country. That's a, that's an ambition I had. And I when I picked someone, I looked at both, and who gives me hundred percent, who gives the country hundred percent, I will pick him. And that is where we won a World Cup. You take early 80s. We had much better cricketers, but we never played as a team. So those are the things we need to address. The cricketers are getting away from cricket. Like, you take the cricket board today, you can't find a single top cricketer in the in the selection committee. Yeah. You can't find a single top cricketer in the administration because they are scared to get in. They don't want to have a bad name. So this is something the minister has to open their eyes and see whether, whether he can change. I'm, I'm so... A shame to say, mm -hmm. he does. I don't know whether he has whether he has powers to do that. But <clears throat> what should be done now? We, we've we've had we've had this court case, um, and uh, everyone is. It all revolves one around the same thing about the conflict uh, that may come about if one is involved in the gaming industry, indirectly or directly. And it's rather specific. It, it tells you who. And what should? The, why is the minister not having an interim committee? The easiest things to me, I, as an outsider, is to have a, a interim committee where the brief is to change the constitution. I think if the interim committee comes in, their first target should be look at changing the constitution at the Sri Lanka cricket. Yeah. And if you do that, I think all these top players will get in. Right, because you can't go like even I'll tell you, with the present setup, even President Maithripala Sirisena comes for a SLC vote or Mahindra Rajapaksa, the former president, comes for a vote. Yeah, they will lose right. because it's it's a corrupt system. Who who now I I contested as a vice president last time, and I still couldn't get into the vice presidency. Mm. It's it's nothing to do with cricket. It's all about how you buy votes. So this is something we have been telling the, the, the sports ministers, we have been telling the presidents, the prime ministers, it's high time we change the constitution, otherwise our cricket will go, back, go down, I think. But if you change the constitution, 
the 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 influence of the Sumitipales, the Dharmadasas, the Ranatungas, uh, which are the main families involved in in this game, for some reason, most people blame it on these rules. Mm. Um, will diminish. Is that a good thing for you? Yeah, yeah that is, that's a good thing. But when you take Sumati Palace and Dharmadasas and Ranatungas, yeah. unfortunately, Ranatungas played for the country. I think all the Ranatungas... Unfortunately. Think, unfortunately. That's the that's word I have to use. Because you can't, you can't talk about families when it comes to cricket. Like, we, we were directly and indirectly involved in cricket. Like, right. we played... I, I, we had Ranat, four Ranatunga brothers played for the country. And if the government is saying, or the minister is saying, Ranatunga family can't get involved. I perfectly we can wash our hands and give it to people like Vettamunis or Javarjanas, Sangakaras, Muralidharans, Arvind de Silvas. I am sure that I, I I tell you honestly, I am not very comfortable getting into cricket anymore because it's it's uh, it's more like a mafia. I have given a job by the the president and the prime minister. Mm. I was given a job when I was at the port. I cleaned the port and we 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 did uh, very well as a, a port authority we got 100% uh, profits and now that i was sh shifted to petroleum where i'm trying to cut down on corruption and trying to get a lot of development things but if i get a chance to, to get cricket right i'll get involved i i'm, I'm that's my life that's part of my life no no uh, um, i hear what you say but you i think can understand this better than most and that's not for anything else, but other than the fact that you are uh, the son of a teacher, right? I, I think we and were... So, so, you can understand that the, the only way that the rulers can rule is by setting high standards. And because that's all the people can see. If the, if the rulers are corrupt in any shape or form, the people can only see that. And then they will say that because this, the filth goes down the line. And then the people will say, well, if it's okay for them, it's okay for us. Yeah. And then they'll carry on. So, um, and honor, of course, is more important than anything else. As whoever we can fool, we cannot fool ourselves. You're, you're absolutely right. This is something we have been uh, trained, by the fa trained by my mother and the father and even the school. And we were brought up in a way where... Now, you take my father, he was a politician for a longer time, yeah. but I can remember when we lost him. Yeah. We couldn't keep the coffin at home properly. Yeah. Never had enough room to go right around at the Sale area like the. Yeah. This is the concept I learned from my father. Yeah. And I can remember I went to the parliament with him for the first time. He was a senior person and I was a first time a newcomer. He took me right around the parliament. What he said? Mm -hmm. and this is the exact this is the same way my mother and the father brought up not only me all of us I think this is where when it comes to cricket we we could have earned now my mother never liked to see me on advertisements yeah and that's the only thing re she requested when I played my first test match mm -hmm. and I I might have lost a lot of money mm -hmm. but uh, today I know that he, she advised me at the right time, at the right place, to do the right thing. I'm and, not saying go for, go for advertisement is not bad, but mm -hmm. what, what they say, don't try, don't sell your body and the talent to earn a buck. So this is something I uh, always say that that's the best thing happened to me. I never went on. I did a lot of charity ads uh, for betterment of cricket, maybe polio ads. Uh, we, we, I went on a TV uh, advertisement to get uh, MRI scan for the National Hospital mm -hmm. and garbage issue I went on uh, TV and I always uh, appear on those for ha with happiness mm -hmm. and I know that money is very important but ultimately that's, a, that's not the way my parents brought, up, brought me up. Mm -hmm. I think that's something I always try to give it to my children. I have a son and a daughter mm -hmm. and I, I, that's the only thing I said. I learned from your mother Achia Mansia. I'm trying to teach you the same particular principles. Well, is, this, this. is this all part why? What no matter how you and your brothers have differences and so on in various matters, but come the weekend, everyone meets and has lunch with the mum. I think the bottom line is we are we are we are a family where we have our own ideas. Now you take my 
uh, fourth brother who is in politics, the former um, chief minister Prashan, yeah. he is with Rajapaksa, he has a dif different agenda. Yeah. Uh, Ruan is the youngest one who is with uh, the present president, mm. Maitripal Sirisena, with SLFP. Mm. And for me, I don't have a party at all. I don't want to be a party man. I always prefer to be independent and try to get uh, leaders. You're, you're the people's man. I, I prefer to be people's man. When the people reject me, I'll go home. I'll, right. I'll be very happy to go home the day pre uh, people say, uh, we are not voting for you. That's, that's the exact thing I wanted people to do. It. Now, I want to get back to current, to current Sri Lanka cricket affairs. We had a whole series of sort of things. And it's always about, you know, Sri Lanka cricket is, we've got a small pool of people, players, and we have a top heavy, uh, a top heavy Sri Lanka cricket administration. There are, I don't know, over 200 people uh, ad advertised, uh, I mean, uh, employed by Sri Lanka cricket. And yet, the cricket doesn't seem, they're not, it doesn't seem to be spread out to go and capture the talent all over the island. I'm sure there are people waiting to be captured. Like you said, six school, uh, play, uh, school boys were in the team when you started. Mm. Uh, and that means they went out and they, 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 they sorted the talent out. So, in the same way, why, why is it that the Minister of Sport, who is the President's Council, why can't he simply appoint a committee and say the problem, he says he's, a, 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 he says he's already identified the problem. So then why can't he appoint the committee and say, can you do it and hurry up about it? I, I don't think he's accurate. I don't think he has identified the issue. Right. I think I'm sure that only the cricketers will identify the issue. Or if he if he wants to listen to the cricketers and sit with the cricketers, they will come out and say these are the issues. And well, all the cricket, the past cricketers have all said basically the same thing. We don't want to get involved. We don't want to get involved because we don't want to be involved in an exercise in delaying tactics or you know, in procrastination. We want action. If you want action, and if you're committed to action, we'll come. I think it's all about, uh, it's, it's all about a film. I think they're trying to, do, to, to sell the cricketers. They will come and speak to the ministers, and he will go on TV and say, I, cricketers came. For a couple of months, nothing happens. So that's the exact thing when the uh, interim committee chairmen were called. I was a former interim committee chairman. And I, I told Jayanta, Siddharth and Anapun Cheva, I said it's a waste of time. But ultimately we took a decision, okay, the new minister will try and see whether he will do the right thing. But uh, now that we, we all felt, uh, we, we were discussing a couple of days back and uh, we were taken to a ride. I said, this is what I told you before we went. Anyway, we did the right thing by the, the, the people of this country to go and explain it to him what is happening. And we, we talk about general cricket, like now, cricket has become a business now. Mm. When we were playing cricket, is not cricket was not a business. Like there were umpires who used to umpire in Kandy, uh, Jaffna, Matara, Gaul. They used to come and tell us, uh, uh, Arjuna, there is a very good cricketer in uh, Ambalangoda, on the batsman can uh, So okay. we used to get with them, them players like Murali, like the first time when someone told me, I went to see Murali uh, by myself. I went in my vehicle and saw Murali bowling. And then as soon as I saw him, I said, this is talent. And I saw someone yeah, like... Where did you see him? I, I went to see one of the St. Anthony's games mm -hmm. when he was playing for school. And uh, Sanat Surya, Sanjeev, my younger brother, came and said, when they went on the under-19 trip, this is the guy you should identify and bring him, bring him to the national squad. And yeah. I saw him. I saw the talent. This is something Aravind has, this is something Roshan has, this is something Guru Singh has. We, whenever we see a player, yeah. I'm not talking about only the seniors, there are even Sangha and Mahela, maybe Murali, they all can identify as soon as we see cricketers. So, so when we were playing, it was not a business. Now it's a business. They, everyone comes, even the cricketers, they talk about money rather than playing for cricket, mm -hmm. but playing for the country. I think that's why I always said, when I picked the 96 World Cup side, I had to convince five top selectors, starting from Dulip, Roy, Ranjan, Siddhartha and them. And, and, and when I went there, they, I had to convince all. So when I picked the side, they are, if you take, take Aravinda out, yeah. Aravinda can get into any world level side at that time. He was one of the best cricketer produced in this country. And when it comes to the other 12, yeah. Murli was young, Vasi was young. 
I could have picked much better players than the, those 12 in, uh, who played in the, uh, the World Cup team. But I picked talent, maybe not very big talent, but commitment. That is something I looked at. I, I wanted players who will put their necks when we go to play a cricket game. That's the team I picked in 1996 where I could captain a winning side because they were so committed. And do you think that Faisal Mustafa, I know he's your colleague and I know you have cabinet um, responsibility and so on, collective responsibility, I know all that. But do you think Faisal Mustafa has uh, the guts, as you put it, and the honor to seriously sit down and take it, an independent stance and take his responsibilities right to the limit and say, this is the stance I'm going to take. We will change the constitution and I'm not interested in anything else. I don't think he has that power. He, he has that guts to do it. I think this is the exact thing when we met uh, interim committee people with the minister. Siddhartha Tamani categorically told, I shouldn't say this, but he said, when it comes to the next election, Mr. Minister, the way people will treat you, they will look at you now, they will see how you take decisions, but if you don't take the right decision now and ruin cricket, you wait and see, uh, the entire country will see you will lose the next election. These are the exact words he said. That's the exact thing will happen in the next elections. You wait and see, cricket can change a government. Yeah. And it has happened in the past. I, I'll tell you, the way we are handling it today, we were the most unpopular government when it comes to the cricketers and the cricket and the cricket loving people we are the most uh, unpopular team I think for the last 20 or 30 years um, and that's it that, that's the uh, you know that's how one has to be one has to sigh in despair but the whole of the country will cry in despair if Fadim Mustafa doesn't um, stop playing games and uh, cricket is a game that he doesn't really understand he's admitted that and at least he can understand the law and he can read the books and he can make his own decision and there's no good do you think there's any other influence I, I politically I, I really don't know but is the president telling him no Pfizer do this and do that as far as I know the president doesn't get involved if the president gets in, I think it's strong. You take Gamini Dishanagi, he never had cricket background. Yeah. But he picked the right people, he got them to run cricket, and that is how we were heading. And he got Abu Fuad, he got Neil Perra, Nisal Senaratna. They, 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 they were gentlemen. So he, he had the ability to pick the people. Absolutely. This is, this Actually, is, our uh, chairman has that ability. Absolutely. He, he was he, there he, at that time. He, he was, he was a vice people. president when we, when we started playing. I know the sacrifices he made. He does, I'm sure that he will scold me as soon as this is a... Yes, probably will scold <laughs> me too. Because the way he committed from, the, from behind the screen was unbelievable. I, even, even today, I, I think he has a knowledge. I always say, why don't you get involved in cricket? I, I always say, people like Mr. Raja Mahendra and them, the contribution they made, no one knows about it. But we, I speak every time and I know that I'm going to get a call and get blackguarded. But this is the truth. A lot of people doesn't want to... I think this is where Gamnidhi Sanayaka was very successful. He picked right business people, he picked right business ad, uh, cricket administration, cricketers to run cricket. But I actually, when, when I said that he, he knows that he can spot the talent, I was actually uh, mentioning that within our group, uh, the chairman knows uh, can spot talent a mile away. Mm. And uh, no matter how young uh, or old, he, he can pick the talent. And that's what we are missing in Sri Lanka cricket. The ability to go out there and to pick that talent and make Sri Lanka cricket get great again. Not only Sri Lanka cricket, it's the entire country. It's the entire country. Entire country. We don't have people who has a vision to pick right people and do the right thing. I think this is what I feel. I'm, I'm not criticizing the government or criticizing anyone. Yeah. But take someone like Imran Khan, who will be the next Prime Minister for Pakistan. Yeah. He had a vision. Uh, he had his own party, suffered for 20 years. Today, people have realized he's the next leader. I think this is something we need. Did he display, I know we are nearly at the end. 
Did he display those leadership skills when you were playing? Oh, absolutely. I think I always used to admire Imran and Kapil Dev. I think if that's the that's the ambition I had when I saw them, how they won a World Cup. Even they, they never that Imran had a very good side, but take Kapil Dev, he never had. He, he had apart from Gavaskar, all the others were ordinary cricketers. Gavaskar was a good cricketer for Test, but not for the shorter game. This is the exact rule. I took it for 1996 and the mm. commitment. Mm. So I think he suffered 20 years. Today he has become the Prime Minister of uh, Pakistan. I think they a lot of people ha have seen. I can remember when he had his first interview after losing everything. He said, my voters are still young. But you know that social media is very strong today. Mm. And the, the, the news can go very, very quickly. I think we need people who love the country to run this country and give commitment yeah. and, and say, we'll do the right thing. I think this is something we are looking at. Actually, you're, you're absolutely right. Uh, because if you see uh, all the appointments that we've had uh, in, our, in our group, um, there are no hangers on. Everyone's taken to do something they're good at or something that they'll excel at. And given the opportunity to to enhance that, uh, there there are no hangers on, hangers on or not. So, so this is this is what Imran has done. He has picked a cabinet with a lot of qualified people and honest people. But if you take these political things like SLFP, UNP, yeah, when when a government comes in, they have to look after the seniors to give the ministries. This is the this is this is where the actually that's right. I, I was looking at some of the qualifications of the people that Imran has picked, and it's it's marvelous. He he's picked them up. He's picked them. Uh, they 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 are professional. They are independent, and they will stand their ground. So Im for, for Imran, uh, he he has a party. He built a party, yeah. but he is not looking at looking after the seniors, giving them portfolios because. Uh, He's not under obligation to anyone. He's done it on his own. Yeah, this is this is the exact thing. Uh, I think if I have to tell tell this, if Imran survives, he will get Pakistan country right. I I I know the way he committed for cricket, the way he changed cricket upside down. I'm sure he will get the country right uh, very soon if he survives. I pray to God, to all the gods, that uh, Imran Khan will remain safe. Absolutely, and that uh, he will. In the end of the day, he will be able to deliver, provided, of course, that he stays alive. It's all about staying alive. Um, Arjun Ranathun, thank you very much. It's been a pleasure having you. Thank and we you. also hope that uh, Faisal Mustafa, whom we know is watching the program, uh, will uh, take heed that uh, Arjun Ranathun is talking with passion, Siddhat Vettimuni is talking with passion, and everybody else is talking with passion. And Faisal Mustafa must understand that this is all driven by passion. I have to say, all the gods all the look gods. after Faisal Mustafa. Oh, really? <laughs> That's the only thing I can say. Right. Yeah. And give him enough um, guts and uh, maybe brains to do the right thing. Well, that's, that's the way you said it. <laughs> I have lots of words. Arjuna Radhisattva, thank you so much. Um, and that's the way it was on Newsline. Sadly, it's time to go home. Take care and God bless. News First Newsline with Faraz Shaukatali.